Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. Praise God, and it's a powerful truth as I preach on life's purpose. Once in a while, about every three months, I like to lay out a message on life's purpose because we need to keep focused on what God has created us for. How many can say amen? How many know it's easy to get lost in living life and forget what you're living life for? It's easy to get tangled up in the, in the harshness of figuring out how to live life and how to get through a day that we can lose track of where we're going. At a wedding, a little girl who was taking it all in turned and asked her mother, why is the bride wearing a white dress? Not wanting to get involved in the real reasons too deeply, she simply said, because white is the color of happiness, and this is the happiest day of her life. She thought about that for a minute, then she turned and asked me, why is the groom wearing black? See, she may be confused about the purpose for the white dress for many years to come. And likewise, many believers tonight are fuzzy about their sense of purpose. There are many walking with God that really don't have any idea that God has an amazing, transcendent purpose for your life. That God has something amazing in store for you. And we often say that almost as if it's a cliche. But God has a reason for your living. God has a reason that he puts you on the earth. God has a reason that you have the talents and the abilities that you do have. And some of the talents and abilities that you don't have. There's a reason for that. You are set exactly where he wants you to do exactly what he has in mind. If you'll follow the word of God, you'll follow what God's prompting is in your life. What is the purpose for your existence? Why are you here? We all think about this question. We try to place value on our lives. We try to justify or explain our existence by what we do. And sadly, many people live their lives going nowhere. There is no other purpose than sliding by, making money, eking out a living, somehow just getting through life. Sometimes the, the, the uh, mumbo-jumbo of living life becomes more important than the purpose for living life. They don't enjoy what they're doing. They simply do what they do to get by. There's no sense of excellence. There's no sense of accomplishment. There's no sense of responsibility towards the higher purposes uh, of the human existence on the earth. There's no sense uh, of, of, of being beholden to a creator that made us. There's no uh, sense of a higher uh, destiny. God has something so much better for you, we're often told, and we roll our eyes as we can't make it through a month without getting stuck with that letter from AEP saying, this is a shut-off notice, and hey, you've you got a couple of days to pay your electric, uh, or, or uh, if you've ever had the one where uh, uh, some people have called me about, and that is that uh, you get one hour to pay your electric bill. So sometimes... When somebody says, God, there's something so much better for you, you roll your eyes and think, he better, because this ain't going too well. And as a pastor, as a pastor, it is my job to create a culture in this church, an atmosphere to facilitate that purpose, to provide opportunity for you to respond to God, to, to help you to find that place that you're supposed to be with God and a purpose for your life. Let me ask you another question. What is it that drives you? Every human being is driven by something. Some are driven by guilt, worry, or fear, insecurity, lust, anger, or resentment. Some are driven by their past. A whole life spent running from something that occurred in their past and was allowed to define you as a person. So you became that injury. You became that offense, and you've lived your entire life looking back to that offense. Some are driven by the desire to have possessions and money, prestige and power, but it never seems to be enough. Most that odd 
driven by the lust for money generally have very little of it. Have you noticed that? The ones that spend most of their time looking for the get-rich-quick schemes are the ones that have very little money. Yet they spend all of their time chasing it. Some are driven by the approval of others, the appro approval addiction, the approval of mom and dad or peers, spending their whole life trying to please people. Yet this is not good enough. Whatever it is that drives your life will determine the quality of life that you live. I said whatever it is that drives you will ultimately determine the quality of the life you live. And when that thing that drives you must be noble, it's got to be transcendent, it's got to be something amazing. You've got to lay hold of something, a purpose that drives you that can make a difference tonight. Because if your purpose is wrong, you will not be happy. I said, if you've got the wrong purpose, the wrong reason, that everything in your life is being driven, you will not be happy. Proverbs 16, verse 4. The Bible says, the Lord has made everyone for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of trouble. I said, the Lord has made everyone for himself, even, yes, even the wicked for the day of trouble. In other words, the Lord has made everything for his own purpose. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 28 and 29, which my soul still seeks, but I cannot find one man among a thousand. I have found but a woman among all these I have not found. Truly, this only I have found, that God made man upright but that they have sought out many schemes. In other words, the writer was saying, I discovered that God created people to basically be upright, but people have each turned to follow their own downward path. We have followed other schemes. We've gone other directions. And by following schemes, we have limited the uprightness of our lives. We have taken ourselves down. We have belittled the creation that God had made us with. People live their lives on one of three different levels tonight. And I'm going to read these three levels with a little bit about them. And I just want you to try and locate yourself on one of these three levels. I'm trying to help you tonight. I believe God wants to help you. I believe God wants to place you somewhere uh, so that you can learn how to get to that next level. How many can say that? Amen. 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 Number one, level number one, you'd be surprised at the, the large uh, majority of people that are on this level. I call it survival mode. They're not, they're just trying to get by in life. They don't really have any higher purpose than going to their job on time, <laughs> than clocking out at the end of the day, sitting in their lazy boy chair and drinking a beer. You give the average American a six pack of cable TV and he doesn't care what the country's doing. And some of these people are voting. That gives you a little scare. They're just trying to get by in life. They're not really living, they're just existing. They go to work, they punch a time clock, they live for the weekends, they got it's Friday, man, I hate my life. The biggest excitement of their life is if, if it, it's been a cold week and the grass didn't grow, so Saturday, woo, they don't have to mow the wrong lawn. They don't have to mow the wrong So to them, that's a big deal. That's their life. They don't really have any major goals, they just want to make it through. They're always fantasizing about someplace better, about someplace they could escape to, about where they'd rather be, but it never happens. But they can never seem to pull it together to do anything better than what they have. This is the level where probably 99% of all poverty resides. If that is where you find yourself this evening, then listen to me. That can all change if you pay attention, that can all change if you listen tonight. Level number two, the success level. You have a good job. You made some money. You're probably in the, in the process of buying your own home, not renting. You have a sense of accomplishment. Your needs are met, or at least very close. You feel like your future might be a bit secure. However, for some strange reason, you wonder, 
Why do I feel so unfulfilled in life? Why is there this big hole of emptiness in my life? Why is it that no matter what I seem to go for and I seem to get there, it's still never enough? See, if success is indeed the answer, then why are there so many books on the market with titles like this, The Success Trap? Or, if I'm so successful, why do I feel like a pig? Or, Beyond Success? Or, Coping with the Fast Track Blues? These are all bestsellers. Downshifting, reinventing success on the slower track. Or, is it success or is it addiction? Or, the success fantasy. When all you've ever wanted isn't enough. Quiet desperation, the truth about successful men. These are all titles to best-selling books. The world is looking for the reason why their success is not enough. They're looking for the reason how to cope once they succeeded in what they thought they wanted out of life. They're still not happy. That success has not brought them contentment. That somehow they're still struggling. That somehow, you know what, they, 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 they need a purpose to get out of bed and they don't have it. The point is, these are all saying the same thing. It takes more than success to satisfy you. Because you still feel a sense of insignificance about your life. Like, what does it all matter in the big picture of life? People are living on these two levels. We need to get to the third level. And that is what, it, and, and, and this is what it's called. It's called the level of significance. The level of significance. You and I, no matter what level we're on, we need to get to the level of significance. Our lives need to be significant or we will never be happy. Are you hearing me? You can be a plumber. You can make good money or you can make a little money. You can do your job very well. You can make families happy and have a sewage back up in their basement. And trust me, you will make families happy if you know how to fix that. Isn't that right, Brother Ben? <laughs> you can do that very well. You can drive a truck, as our brother Don does. And that, 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 is a, that is a noble career. But if that's all you're doing, if that's all there is, then you're missing something. Because even in the midst of it, I, I was in pharmacy, I was in uh, computers, I had graphic design, public relations. I, I, could, I could right now get a job in probably 15 different fields. I literally could. And, and the reality is, is that any one of those fields would be significant at, at, at a time when they would make me happy uh, for, for a bit. Uh, they, you know, I'd enjoy the job while I'm learning it, while I'm jumping in there, while I'm challenged by it, right? But there will come a time, eventually, that it won't be challenged anymore, am I right? And there'll become a time when you figure out how to do it, you settle down into the mundane, and now you're waking up on Friday morning wishing it was Saturday. And somehow, you, you've got what you thought you wanted, and yet, you don't feel your life is making a significant impact. See, we need the level of significance. Living your life with a purpose. That's what the level of significance is. This level has nothing to do with how much money you have. It has nothing to do with how much education you have or what possessions you own. I want you to mark that down. I want you to get that through. Uh, this mind, this, this worldly mind that so often the world trains us to think that it matters what you have, that it matters what you do, that it matters how smart you are, that all these things is all that really matters, that if you have a bank account, then that's where you're at. No, 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 that's a lie from hell. The level of significance has nothing to do with how much money you have, how much education you have, or what possessions you own. I've found in life that when you are living your life with purpose, you can be happy in all kinds of circumstances. When you're living your life with purpose, when you are being driven by purpose, when you're being driven by something larger than yourself, when you're being dri driven by the purpose of God for your life, then I want to tell you, it, it makes zero difference where you live or what kind of house you have. You can be happy in all kinds of circumstances. 
doesn't really matter where you are. I was in Nairobi some years ago, uh, Kenya, and uh, all of you, or most of you know, I pastored uh, as a missionary for four years in Zambia, in Central Africa. Uh, Nairobi is Eastern Africa in Kenya, and I'm there in Kenya, and I'm in the slums of Nairobi, where, you know, some of the pastors I was with doing the conference were freaked out by the, uh, by the way it looked. I'm looking around, I'm thinking, man, I'm home. I'm in this slums of Nairobi, and I'm thinking, you can take, you can take the entire slum of Nairobi, where our leadership church is located, and you can put it in the middle of Livingston, Zambia, and nobody would notice. It's the same. It looked the same. And I thought to myself, I could live here. I could work with these people. In fact, I've yet to find a place I could not live. Doing the will of God is all that is satisfying to me. I said, doing the will of God is all that matters to me. That's all that's satisfying. That's all that, it doesn't matter. I've lived in Alaska. I've lived in Africa. I've lived in Arizona, where it got 120 degrees for 53 days. I've lived in Everett, Washington, where it almost always rained. And I've lived in Ohio, where I've yet to gauge one day from the other on what the weather's going to be like for crying out loud. Amen. But I could live there. I could work with these people. Doing the will of God is all that matters. I feel like my life only has purpose if I'm about the Father's business. I want you to hear me. See, I've lived in a 5,000 square foot house. I've had two houses with built-in swimming pools. The one I live in now does not have a swimming pool, but we're on four acres out in the country. I've also lived in small, dingy apartments. One apartment attached to the back of the liquor store. My first apartment was $140 a month. That ought to tell you about what it was uh, consistent of. You had to literally get down on your hands and knees to feel the floor to see whether or not it was carpet or paint. She couldn't tell the difference. It was carpet, by the way. And so I, I, have, I have sat on dirt floors of mud huts. I have slept in Arctic sleeping bags in the military tents in minus five degree weather in Alaska. And all in all, in the big picture of life, church, listen to me, it doesn't matter. I am convinced I can adapt and I can overcome. No matter where God puts me, I can make it work. No matter what, God, as long as God is my driving factor, as long as God is the moving purpose in my life, as long as God is the reason for my living, I can live anywhere I want. When you have purpose, then every day is important. Your life is not an accident. You're going somewhere. Your life is not wasted. You feel a sense of achievement. You feel like your life is making impact. You can see soul. You have a picture of people whose lives have been touched by yours. You can see progress. You can see timelines of families doing better because you are alive. Think about that for a minute. Because you are alive, other people are doing better. Other hearts being touched. Children that would have been raised in poverty, raised in, in godless homes, uh, turned out to be uh, smoking dope and hiding from their parents at 12. Come on. These kids are now living in godly homes. They're now living with parents that love the Lord. They're now, amen, they now got, and they're, they're learning in school. They, their parents care about what they're doing. They care about where they're going. They care about their eternity. Listen to me. You can see entire generations shift by one person reaching a family for God. That's the level of significance. Your life is not an accident. Your life is not wasted. And I'm not saying you need to change your career or your job. It's not about what you do. It's about what it is that drives you. It's about what it is that motivates you. At what level would you say you're living your life in this evening? In, in these three levels, which level, if you'll be honest with yourself, are you actually in? Survival level. Success level. Or significant. 
can you honestly say you're living your life with purpose? See, what living your life with purpose will accomplish is amazing. It is just absolutely shocking to see what your life will accomplish with purpose. Back to the big question everybody and every one of us needs to answer and come to grips with tonight. Why am I here? Why are you here? Oh, I was called to be a truck driver. I was called to be a plumber. I was called to work in a restaurant. I was called to make coffee. These are all wonderful things. These are all noble things. These are all, I, I, I love people with jobs. I like to know as much as I can know about what everybody's doing. Amen. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I was watching, uh, even today, we went out to lunch and it's where Ben works and John works and a number of our church members work there because they've been so uh, faithful. Amen. Brother Ben, Brother John, they have been absolutely impacted. They have had a level of significance in their life that it brought probably a half a dozen people or more from their workplace to this church not serving God. And I'm looking there and they, I walk in, I, I hardly ever go to shows. Yet a ton of people knew me there. I, the waitresses, uh, the people, uh, they knew me. I, I, I don't know why. I, 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 I didn't know them. And I'm looking around, I'm watching Ethan. Ethan's running around, he's doing his job. I don't know, is he at his job now? Huh? We will discuss this later. <laughs> he's running around. He's doing his job. I'm watching him. I'm thinking, here's a young kid. That is, he's working hard. He was running around getting it done, working with other people. And I'm thinking, you know what? Ben's got a hold of this. Ben's got a hold of this kid. And this kid's in there, and he's working hard. And he's in the midst of, 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 of the fruit of their lives. Meaning that the people that Ethan is interacting with are, are, are results of the impact that Ben and John Fisher are making in that workplace. How exciting is that? He's working within the results of an impacted life, a level of significance. Back to the big question, why am I here? Why are you here? What, are you, what is your life doing to make a difference? I want to help you answer that question tonight. It will go towards relieving a lot of frustration, I promise you. See, without purpose, your life is easily misdirected or swayed. Without purpose, you'll be constantly changing gears. Changing what you like. Moving from job to job as you get tired of one. You don't show up and then you move on to another. There will be fear of long-term commitments if you have no purpose. Because what if I change my mind? You're directionless. Like the waves of the sea, I mean, being tossed to and fro. Basically, basically, all of life has a sort of a transient or a temporary quality to it when you have no purpose. When your life's making no significant impact. Your decisions will be for today. You'll do nothing to uh, address tomorrow. Nothing is lasting, nothing is fulfilling, because you have no purpose. This is why marriages are in so much trouble. Marriages are lasting shorter and shorter periods of time. Two people without purpose, trying to live together, don't even know where each individual is going, let alone where they're going as a whole. They have no idea the direction their marriage is headed. They have no idea what it is they share that makes them special. They lose track of why they're even together. Why is that? Because they're two people without purpose trying to stay together. Martine and I, thank God she's in the nursery. She is, and me are opposites. It doesn't matter what. She, she likes blue, I like green. She'll like green, I like blue. It won't, it won't matter. No matter what it is, we can promise each other. We'll both agree with the opposite. We'll look at a catalog and we'll decide on two opposite colors for flooring. We're, that, that's how we've always met. And it, it, we are complete opposites. She, she uh, you know, I, I'm a jokester and, and, and like loud and, and like, they make noise and, and, and social and out there. And, and she would rather sit uh, and, and uh, rein me in and quit talking to everybody and just go home. Margie 
and I recently celebrated our 33-year wedding anniversary this year. And why is that? Because we live for the same purpose. That's the only reason we're still together. We are motivated chiefly by the will of God for our lives. Because of that, we have a great marriage. Because of that, we know that above all, no matter what else happens between the two selfish people coming together to become one, that come on, we know that above all else, we are accountable to a higher God that has put us together for a grand purpose. And if the two of us together are synergistic, that means we are a greater force together than each individual would be alone. And because we're synergistic, God has placed us to the utter ends of the earth, from Alaska to Africa, from Arizona to Ohio, that God has placed us and God has sent us out a two by two, come on somebody, in completely opposite personalities, amen, to touch the world. And because we've done that, we've made impact together. That's why. That's why our marriage works. We are two people with purpose going the same direction, even when we're bumping into each other's shoulders on the way quite often. Amen? That happens. But we're going the same direction. Perhaps your life is governed by the mood of the moment. Maybe this whim or that whim, this relationship, that relationship, this desire, that desire, this builds in you a sense of instability. It feels like the bottom could drop out of your life at any moment. There's nothing solid, nothing concrete, nothing to hold on to. Just one week away from homelessness and despair. Each morning is a challenge to face the new day. The book of James and the word of God tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See, without purpose, there comes a sense of hopelessness. I said, without purpose, there is no hope. People are stressed. They're burned out. People feel overworked and underpaid. My goodness, there has been two weeks worth of riot and protest over a presidential election because somehow to these people, whoever's president is more important than who they are Amen. as individuals, what their lives mean. That somehow their lives are living through vicariously through their politics. That is ridiculous. That will never, ever, ever bring them anywhere. Hey, I can live, uh, in, I, I've lived in, in countries with dictators. Come on, I can live here. Doesn't matter who's in charge, because always my God is in charge of me. Doesn't matter. I want to make sure I vote, sure I'm responsible, sure I take care of voting for the one that I believe best express, uh, expresses uh, uh, my uh, values. But I want to tell you something. My whole life doesn't explode if I don't get my way. See, without purpose, there's a sense of hopelessness. That's why there's so much uh, invalid people out there that, are, that need something else to validate them because they're invalid. They don't have what they need to be happy. So they're looking for it. So they're expecting other people to validate them, to respect them, to raise them up, to, to you, know, uh, you know, notice that they're a person of this color or that race or that race. Oh, or else uh, this is going to, it's going to come down, going to come down hard. I demand that you lift me up and make me somebody because of what I am. Because they have no purpose. They're hopeless. Stress, burned out, overwork, underpaid, leads to hopelessness. The real problem is not overwork. The real problem is because people don't know why they're working. It's not overwork. You don't know why you're working. You know why you're working. That's why doctors can work 100 hours a week and not be freaked out. Why? Because their purpose is great. They know why they're working. They're saving lives. The problem with you uh, uh, having, a, uh, having a concern about being overworked is not because you're truly overworked. It's maybe you've lost track of why you're working. The real problem is they don't know why they're working. Why they're doing what they're doing. Why are you doing what you're doing? They feel like they're wasting their time in a dead-end job. But they don't know what else to do or where else to go. Isaiah 49 verse 4 says, Then I said, 
I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work with my God. I replied, but my work all seems so useless. I've spent my strength for nothing and to no purpose at all. That's what the scripture said. You ever feel like that? I've worked all these years. What do I have to show for? Emptiness. Credit card debt. Constant barrage of collection, phone calls, chaos. Children that don't respect you, you've spent, you've sacrificed to raise them, you've brought them up, you've worked to double, triple jobs uh, to get it done, and then they get old enough to, 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 to become teenagers, and all of a sudden they know how the whole world works, and they hate you, and they disrespect you, and it's like you just want to, it, it'd be hard to say publicly, uh, well, you just put the chunk in this. <laughs> we just can't go around doing that. I'm gonna say that. Because we love our children. We love our children. Amen. Even though I have a number of Mama said, as soon as I said the word choking, all through the sentence. You know what I'm talking about? Because somehow we've labored and there doesn't seem to be any reward. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen to me. When you have a purpose, when your life is making impact, when you are making a significant impact with the people around you, with the, with, with the people that the sphere of influence that God has given you, when you are able to raise up and make impact and make have a significant reach in people's lives, and your purpose will keep you sustained. In Zambia, we saw thousands, literally thousands, come to Christ. In California, we see 20 people saved in four services, often. In New Zealand, we saw 40 people get saved and stick and stay in the same church. They, get, they came over five services, got saved and stayed. And they've grown and built from that. I preached to 100 single people. I, I was watching altar calls with people weeping, people on their knees, getting help from God, generations changing. When the main focus of your life is to glorify God and to live for his will, nothing is ever wasted in life. There's never any moment where I've worked hard and I've got nothing to show for. If you're doing the will of God, if you're living for God, if your purpose is about what does God want to do with my life, then there doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're always satisfied. There's always a, a moment where you stand up at the end of the day with a small smile on your face because you realize that another day has not been wasted, that something has happened, that somebody's changed, that somebody's been touched, that you've made an inroad, that you've impacted somebody, that there's significance. Even if your best client at your business bounced the check to you and they took it back out of your business account. And, you, and there's all kinds of things that can happen, all kinds of things that have gone wrong. But if there is significance, then I'm smiling at the end of the day. Amen? Amen. When the main focus of your life is to glorify God and live for his will, nothing is ever wasted. Everything we do will have impact. Your life, your work, your energy will be significant. To those of you who are saved, yet you are feeling this sense of frustration, focus your vision tonight like a laser on the will of God and his purpose for your life. Make it a divine mission to accomplish that no matter what the cost. Make it your divine mission to make impact, to be significant, to make a difference. And for the first time in your memory, you will be living life. I don't know everybody that's in here tonight, but I do know this, that Jesus died for everybody. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. 
that he demonstrated his love towards you, you, personally, you. With your name on his lips, your face in his mind, your heart in his heart. He died for you. While you were yet sinners, while you're still a sinner, he died for you. Jesus loves you. And in a desperate move to bring you together with heaven, he died on the cross of Calvary. Gave up his own sinless life as a precious offering, sacrifice, or ours. The Bible says that if you'll come to Christ, Old things will be passed away, and behold, all things will become new. That your life will change. You'll cast your sins as far as the east is from the west into the depths of the sea. The weight of the world, the weight of sin, the weight of shame, mistakes, failures, can literally tonight fall off spiritually as Christ takes them from you and places it with his resurrection power to lift you up and start you fresh and new in him. That Jesus Christ tonight desires to give you a purpose, a reason for living, a calling, a transcendent, simply means something beyond the ordinary, something beyond yourself, something beyond the physical. Transcendent means that he can give you something that is beyond your combination of talents, that doesn't seem possible for you to do, yet he can make it come to pass. Because he loves you. So if you're not saved, you're not born again, you're not right with God, but you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ tonight, right here, right now. I'd like you to lift up your hands all over this place, Pastor. Pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. You put your hand up quickly. Uh, amen. Amen. God sees that hand. How many others? Put your hand up right now. All over this place. Pastor, pray for me. I'm not saved. I'm not right with God. I'm not, I'm not where I need to be. But before I go any further, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to get my heart right. I want my sins forgiven. I want to be on my way to heaven. I want to make sure uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus is my Savior. And if something happened to me, I would be right with God. And you'd lift up your hand to make sure that that's going to happen tonight. You put your hand up, Pastor, pray for me. Maybe you're backslidden away from God. You were saved at one time. The world got a hold of you. Got its claws in your back once again. You found yourself far from him again. You'd like to re, uh, reconnect with Jesus on, on that powerful level. That humble level. That level where you say, oh, I've blown it. I allowed the world back in. But I want to rededicate my heart to you. You lift up your hand. Backslidden away from God. I want to get your heart right with God. This evening, before you go any further. Amen. Anybody at all? I have a child over here. 